allow yourself to return here fully to bring your attention and focus fully to this moment we're meeting in the present we're meeting only in the present without the story without your personal story So we're meeting in this present without the past, without what you know already. We're meeting in this moment without the future, only in this present moment, the way it is. So in this moment, I invite you to leave your past, to not know your past. If you know your past, it means that you're carrying it in the present. It means that you're creating your future with your past. So if you leave your past and everything that you know, you are simply here. And this is a great simplicity of being. For the mind, there is nothing much to do because the mind is functioning from the past into the future. The mind needs engagement. It wants to be engaged. It wants your attention. That's how the mind keeps on going by demanding your attention look at this thought look at that thought how about this and how about that oh i forgot something and this is how the mind takes your attention if you recognize these different ways that the mind takes your attention, you may realize that there is another way that you don't need to give your attention because your priority becomes being here. To be here fully is to let go, not to hold the past. Not even to try to hold the present. How can you hold the present since it's already here? So not even holding the present. And of course, not holding the future because it's not even here yet. Holding happens quite habitually it happens automatically because your attention gets absorbed into the energy field of the past into the energy of the present into the energy of the future 
So when your attention gets absorbed into the past, present, future energies or thoughts or feelings, then you're holding the past, the present, the future as energy, as holding. So you see in this present moment, you're carrying so many luggages of the past. So many luggages of the future. It's quite heavy. It's quite limiting to hold so much. So my invitation is to become lighter. And that is by not holding, releasing. You already know how to hold very well. It's quite habitually automatic to hold on to something because you know it, because you feel safe, because you've already done it before because you learned it already. But now we're speaking about something else, which is releasing, which is not holding. So you're very familiar with being pressure, having tensions and stress and blockages, but you're not so familiar with freedom, with lightness, with boundlessness. So you need to become familiar with lightness freedom, boundlessness. Everything that you already know is old. It's already experienced. Thoughts, feelings, emotions, they're all quite old. And they repeat so often. So in this present moment, I invite you to experience lightness. To experience freedom. To experience boundlessness. And how do we do this? How do we come to this lightness? First, by recognizing what you are holding right now. You may be holding a sense of knowingness, a process of understanding. Oh, I, I am trying to understand what he's saying. I'm, I'm trying to listen and to analyze what he's trying to say. So that's a process of understanding. Or some of you may say, oh, I already know this, I heard this before, so you hold the knowing. You may hold a particular feeling right now, excitement, for example, or anxiousness, even fear. So you are certainly holding something right now every one of you. 
there is certainly something here that you have, that you hold, that is inside. And this is the step number one. Just to honestly observe yourself and to recognize what is being held. We are not in a hurry, so this is a, a practice. We are not in a hurry for the future. We're not in a hurry anywhere. Even for enlightenment. So you can slow down and notice what is being held. If there are some thoughts, it's okay. These are thoughts. You're holding them in your head in the space of your mind. If there are some emotions, these are like bubbles or balls of energy or river of emotion, whichever way is easier for you to visualize it. Emotion is being held in the space of your body. If there is a particular feeling, and most likely there is some feeling, because we are feeling beings, human beings, feeling beings. So you have your five senses and your inner senses to sense that there is a certain feeling right now that is being held in the space of your body. And for those who rush to conceptualize with your minds, I advise to slow down, come back to the feeling. Your understanding is not important. Feeling is deeper, it's more important. There might be a certain story attached to the feeling. A story is a signpost from a distance saying that there is this kind of feeling. A story has no reality. Feeling has reality. Feeling is much closer. When you feel, you are one with that which you feel. So feeling transforms into being. And your being is right here. It's the wholeness. It's your total experience. Your being, in other words, it's your total experience right now.
and you're holding your experience right now. And how and where are you holding your experience right now? You're holding it with your attention. Your attention is fully absorbed in the experience right now. Because you're focusing on experience as a whole right now. And where is your experience right now? Here, in this space, So in this big space, it is your experience happening right now. And it doesn't matter the details, the particularities. I invite you to recognize your whole experience happening now in this space. Not what is happening, but that it is happening, that your experience is happening in this space right now. So the space is the context where your experience is happening. And furthermore, you can verify that you are aware of your experience. Of course you are aware of your experience happening right now. So if you can verify that you are aware of your experience happening right now, how do you do that? How do you verify? From which place do you verify that your experience is happening right now? I don't expect your answer, so don't try to figure it out. Just listen, just allow yourself to openly listen. So if you're aware of your experience, so from which place or who is aware? It must be the awareness, aware. But most of you are not familiar what is this awareness? Well, you are simply aware, and that's what it is. And you're aware of your experience, and that's what it is. You are seeing your experience. So from being aware, the next step is seeing that you are also aware. To see that awareness is aware. Now that might last for a second or a couple of seconds. Try to stay longer in the deepest place where you can reach, where you can stay. Mm -hmm. 
This seeing is lightness, freedom, bliss. And the longer you stay in this deepest seeing, the stronger and brighter it becomes as lightness, freedom and bliss. But to stay in this place of seeing, you have to go through this process, which we have been going through step by step together. By seeing what you're holding, allowing that to be here, whatever you're holding, Allow it to be here. It's already here. That's fine. It's not a problem. Recognize the space around it. Recognize your whole experience. That is much bigger than any particular feeling because your whole experience includes everything that is in this present moment your body any feelings anything that's happening now including this room and this space And your experience is happening in the space, in the field, in the context. And you can verify that you are aware, yes, immediate, less than a second. It takes to verify that you're aware of your experience. And you can even see that you're aware already immediately. It doesn't take time. It doesn't take any time. To see that you're aware of your experience takes no time at all. Don't wait for it. So seeing is the source. It's the full consciousness. And yes, you have experienced it right now, so simple. Now the difficulty is to stay in that seeing, the deepest seeing, the widest, the most open, the boundless seeing. The difficulty it is to stay because there is so much absorption into lower vibrational energies, including thoughts, feelings, emotions. Your attention is so attached to smaller energy fields. These thoughts or feelings or energies are so sticky. You know, they, they are very sticky with your attention. They grab your attention and they take it into the process of thoughts, into confusion of emotions, into resistance of feeling. So there is a certain stickiness that your attention is absorbed and stuck 
on to some smaller, lower vibrational energy fields. And that is fine too. Allow that, allow it, don't resist it. If you resist it, that's not the way, allow it. Because it's already the case. So allow yourself to be in a smaller energy field. And that's the bottom up approach to allow your bottoms to be here. Resistance is the single most deepest blockage allowing is the way so even if something is very deeply uncomfortable just allow it and you will see that there is more space around it Allow everything to happen as it is happening already now. Allowing creates the change. When you want to make a change with resistance, you have no power. When you allow thoughts to be here, feelings, emotions, any sensations, when you allow that opens the power, it creates the change. Full consciousness is allowing everything to be here without resistance or denial that it is already here. Denial is another form of resistance or unwillingness to see something is another form of resistance. Justifications is a form of resistance. Resistance has so many forms so many shades, allowing is simple. Allowing creates a change, unconditional allowing. For some of you, if it's too complicated, it's okay. You don't need to understand. Just allow yourself to be open and listen, to hear.
at any moment you can check your experience you can check also what is being held what is not processed yet and it's fine it is fine allow it to be here In meditation, your attention may start drifting into some space, into some place. Resting on a cloud. So your attention may start drifting somewhere else. It is not easy to sustain and maintain your attention openly here. It's quite fascinating how your attention gets sticky and caught up in all kinds of thoughts, emotions, feelings and spaces, experiences. Experience is, a, is the big happening, the big happening. That is your experience the big happening. The big now is the field of all experiences. The field of all experiences. Because your experience is unique to you but there are many others so the big now is all experiences the field where it all happens And try to soften your attention. To soften your attention and focus. When you soften your attention and focus, it slightly expands. And suddenly you are closer to the deeper now, a deeper experience.
So give some time to soften and expand. To soften your attention and focus and expand. Give yourself time to process what is happening now. If you get caught up in something, it's time to see more space around it. There is always more space around any feeling, any thought, even around your whole body.
there is a beautiful brightness, warmth, a yellow golden sun shining above you, in front of you. Beautiful yellow golden sun shining above you, in front of you.
So when you are ready, you can slowly start coming back. Welcome back, welcome back. Experience is big. Experience is big. It is all that is happening right now. However, the space is bigger than the experience. because it is where everything is experienced. So the space is very large. It holds your experience. And your awareness is bright. Your awareness is bright and sharp. It is very immediate. Bright, sharp, immediate. But your attention is slow. So first, your awareness is bright, sharp, immediate, but your, 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 then your attention is like, oh, it's slow. So your attention drifts and absorbs. Your attention and focus are slow. They drift and absorb. Drift and absorb. Drift and absorb. So your awareness is sharp and bright, immediate, alert. It is here, of course, where else? And the seeing, now that's even different. The seeing is boundless. It's not limited by the field of awareness. And it's not limited by your attention of this or that, your attention. It's not limited. Your seeing is total, boundless. And the seeing has warmth to it. There is a certain radiance, a certain warmth. Your seeing has warmth and radiance. That's why it's called the source. It's not something external, totally not external. You're, you are already seeing, you are aware. Your experience is here. So I'm not saying anything new really, but I'm helping you to recognize reconnect, recognize, realize. The nature of seeing is boundless. It is very light. Seeing has no effort. It's very, very light. 
lighter than light. So seeing is very light, has no effort. It's happening already here. Your attention has effort. You get that? Your attention has effort. Your focus has effort. Seeing has no effort. So how can you get that? Well, you already have it. <laughs> You can't get it because you already have it. It's here. Who can get it? It's your attention. The mind tries to grab onto something. You can't grab the air. Where is the air? How can I grab this? How can I grab the seeing? You can't. You already are the seeing. You can't grab the air. But you can relax. You can soften. You can certainly process what you're holding on to. And this is how your seeing is liberated from the grips of your attention and focus. So your seeing is liberated. Your attention and focus, they need objects. For your attention and focus to exist, they literally need objects. They can't live without objects. Awareness does not require objects because it is already the subject. It is aware of. So awareness is the subject. Your attention and focus require objects. Seeing requires nothing. It's already happening. So it's, it is quite easy to see, but it's not easy to stay as the seeing, not to hold, not to grab, to stay, to be, stay and be as a seeing. So it's not easy to stay and be as the seeing. And the seeing is the source, the sun, the radiance, the brightness, the warmth, some call it love, some call it happiness, some call it freedom or bliss. It, they all come from that source. Different vibrations emanate from the sun, from the source. So my duty is to help you to, to return, to recognize, to realize. My duty is not to educate you about something new. You have plenty of teachers for that. My duty is to help you to Recognize, remember, to realize, to verify that that's already the case. This is how it works. You have forgotten and you have come into smaller energy fields. You got absorbed, you got lost, you got identified into the smaller energy fields. And that's okay, it's fine. We will come back. You will come back. That is my duty to help you come back. Um, 
Um, my question is about keeping presence and creating space in the everyday life that is super packed for me mm -hmm. in multi roles. Okay. And um, where there is a lot seems to be at stake at work, in the family, and all around, and seems to be very important. <laughs> Yes, yes, everything is very important. How, how do I take my attention off that? How do I step back so I can see that there is space around? It? Because I feel uh, almost no space around. Yes, 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 yes. Life can present as being very important. The work, family can present themselves to be very, very important. As if the whole world depends, the whole universe depends on, on what's happening at your work right now. You know, so of course life has that tendency, yes, that is the case, yes. So life has a tendency to present, to be very important in these ways. Space is always available. That is number one. So space is always available. If you look around just a little bit, well, there is space. Become familiar. And that's how you do it. You don't need to go into deep meditation. You know, how long did it take you now? Like a few seconds? Yes. You see how, how good it is? Space is available. Just look around, it's here. Become familiar. And that is the way. And bit by bit, it will expand. It will strengthen. The importance will subside as a feeling of importance. Although you can still do everything but without that pressure. So it's not really about what you do or what happens. It's from which place it is experienced, it is done. And it's always available, become familiar. If I'm so overwhelmed with a lot of things which are holding me back, which is not only in meditation, it's as well in, in social situations. I feel that a lot. How do, how, how what is a good way to, to, to be with it? A good way with the things that hold you back is to step forward. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yes, it's to step forward. Now, however, there is a different way. There is a different way. Stepping forward currently can be like on a narrow road. Stepping forward on a narrow road. But when you expand the road a little bit, you have more space to maneuver, less chance of accident. <laughs> <laughs> so expand the road and step forward. Essentially it is to expand the road, expand the space, 
I can see your energy field, yes, and expanding the road. Things are holding you back. Well, it's, it's the luggages, the luggages. Or perhaps something which you haven't, haven't worked on yet. And it's okay, it's fine. And how do you deal with the backlog? With the things that hold you back, the backlog. You expand the road, expand the space, and there is a new way. So then you, you process some backlog in the new space, and then everything is becoming lighter. And you can move with more strength forward. And uh, moving forward, uh, you're recommending, is it uh, referring to uh, creating space behind me where things which are holding me back can dissolve? Or is it like a specific direction I, I can step to? No, no, no. It's, it's space, yes. First of all, it's about space. It's about where is the backlog in the space which needs to be expanded a bit more. Like if how many luggages can you put in a small room, in a small you know, luggage room? Only a few. But if there is a big hallway, then these few luggages, they don't seem to occupy much space at all. So expand the space. But in the state of just pure seeing, is there any sensation at all or no sensation at all? Sensation. There seems there, a subtle vibration. Yes, yes, yes. There is a radiance or brightness. A pulsation of something. No. But it's not like the kundalini energy is no, going in no, my heart. No, nothing None to do that. with kundalini, no. Nothing but to do with chakras really, or kundalini. When I'm really, really subtle, maybe we might say samadhi, there still does seem to be some quality of experiencing, some liveness, some... And I wonder if that means I'm back in attention again, or... Mm. I'm not clear, I guess. I, I, I get you, yes, yes. It's, it's, you should not be too concerned about if some kind of experience arises. You shouldn't be concerned about that. You should simply see that, oh, this cloud arises. Oh, this cloud passes. If you become concerned and then you start asking questions, so am I the seeing or am I now the experience or what's going on, then you become attached to the cloud. Let the cloud come, let the cloud go without concern. Maybe another way to say it, as the seer, is something seen or are you simply abiding as pure seeing itself? In the seeing, there is only seeing. There is no objectivity Object. or subjectivity. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. So this is such a mystery point to try to, as you say, hold into or, or abide with or stay with. My God. Yes, yes, yes. yes. And another way, Gregory, is, is, is to do way round, is to do the bottom-up approach. So, so you're sitting and, and you are, you're practicing, you're seeing, and then suddenly comes up and you say, oh, good, let me be with that, which what came up. Yeah. And just be with it. Just let it be there. Ideally, not in it, 
and not concerned about it, not too much investigating it either, just being with it. And then you will see that suddenly you, you will naturally come back to the seeing because that's your goal. But you will not ignore that which is seen. So you let things come into the seeing, but not in it. Don't go in it, you know? Okay. As, as soon as you touch the fire, you, you burn. So this is why I give this example of the sun the sun is always shining no matter if the earth rotates this way or you know the earth is constantly rotating day and night but the sun is always shining it's always warm it's always giving we could say always unconditional and that's the seeing, it's always seeing, it's always here, always available. Perhaps your attention turns as the earth into the blank side and then turns into the daylight. That is your attention turning. But the sun is always seeing, always shining.